Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cover spanning tree. So what spanning tree is, it's a protocol that's supposed to prevent loops. Loops are bad because packets can just travel around your network over and over again. So what that means is that your switches, your layer 2 broadcast domains, will just keep processing that packet over and over and over again. So another issue with loops is it's called MAC flapping. So MAC flapping is when you have a MAC address being updated to your MAC address table. And then of course it gets updated again when it comes on a different interface. And so the MAC address table just constantly gets updated depending on which interface comes in. An example of that is PC3 trying to reach PC0. There's two paths. We can go from switch three to switch one or to switch two. Now we all know that if I try to ping PC0 from PC3, it needs to create a frame, and that frame requires a destination MAC address. And so PC3 is going to send out an ARP request to get that MAC address to match the IP address so it can complete the frame and put the frame on the wire. So PC3 sends out an ARP request. ARP is broadcast, and so it's going to get broadcasted out both ports. And switch 2 forwards it on, switch 1 forwards it on. Switch 0 gets that ARP request from two different ports. And so switch 0 gets the same ARP request on two different ports. So what happens is it will update its MAC address table to say PC3 is on the connection going to switch 1. Then it gets the ARP request again, the same ARP request. It says, oh, PC3, that is on the port going to switch 2. And so it overrides this MAC address table for each one. And that happens for every single packet that comes through, every single broadcast. It's just going to keep overriding its MAC address table. And if you look at it, it's just you know a couple of computers, not a big deal. But when you have you know dozens to hundreds of computers and all the broadcasts that they do, that quickly overwhelms your system's resources. And the poor switch, just constantly updating its database, is just gets overworked. So we have packets that get sent around and never die. Then we have MAC address flapping. So the third thing that's bad with loops is what's called duplicate packets. And that's when packets get sent to PC0 and say, you know, broadcast again. And that ARP request in PC0 receives the ARP request twice. And so it has to discard one of the packets. Now imagine that for every single time they have to communicate. That's a lot of packets. You know, half your packets are being discarded because it's already received it. So now you're taking up resources on PC0 as well. Packets never dying, MAC address flapping, and duplicate packets. All of it takes up resources. It takes up your bandwidth, it takes up your memory, it takes up your CPU cycles. It just takes up everything. So that's why loops are bad. So let's go ahead and try pinging our computers, just to make sure it works. Now everything is on VLAN 10, and I have trunks set up between all the switches. Oops, wrong IP address, need a one in here. There we go. So that's PC0, PC1, PC2, and PC3. So I can ping all computers so we know that the network is working, that we have spanning tree working, and all computers can communicate. Now it's easy to tell that switch zero is blocking a port. And you can tell that from the orange dot. All the green triangles, that means that everything is actively forwarding traffic. So let's go figure out why switch zero is the one that's doing all the blocking. show spanning tree summary. We can see that it's not a root bridge for anything and it's blocking a port, but we don't know which port it's blocking. If we do a show spanning tree, we'll see which port it is that's getting blocked. Now F01, that's an alternate. That means it's being blocked. You can see the status is block. Port 03, that is a root port. And what that means is that it's 
pointing to the report. This is how you reach the root bridge. And it is forwarding. So next we look at the addresses. So look up here, we see address. Now this is for the root ID. So this is the root bridge. This is the MAC address of the root bridge, quad0.0cda. Bridge ID, this is the MAC address of switch 0, 0005.5EA2. Now the reason why I'm telling you MAC addresses is because if the priorities are the same, so this right here is the default priorities, they have not been set, MAC addresses are what decide who's going to be the root bridge. In spanning tree, lower is better. So the lower the priority, the more likely you're going to be the root bridge. Same with MAC addresses. The lower the MAC address, the more likely you're going to be the root bridge. And of course, the device with the lowest priority or the lowest MAC address wins. So if the priorities are the same, MAC addresses are the tiebreaker. And remember, all MAC addresses are unique. No two devices have the same MAC address. So root bridge, quad zeros, this device, 0005. So quad zeros is lower than 0005. Go to switch one. Show spending tree. Once again, we see this one's MAC address is 000A. Now it has two different ports. It has a root port. If we slide this over, we can see that this interface right here points to the root bridge, switch three. So the root port is the one that's pointing to the root bridge. F01, that is pointing to switch zero and it is a designated port. So root ports point to the root bridge. Designated ports point away from the root bridge, but they are still forwarding. Switch to. Once again, this is the MAC address of switch two, 0004, root bridge, root port, that's on the interface pointing to the root bridge, so you're pointing towards it. The designated port, you're pointing away from the root bridge. And finally, the root bridge. Show a spanning tree summary. We see that it is the root bridge for default in HR. Now default just means VLAN 1. Show spanning tree. We can see that it has the same address for both the bridge and the root ID because it is the root bridge. And we can see that on the root bridge, everything is a designated port. So the people who made spanning tree is kind of confusing. Root ports point to the root bridge. Designated ports point away from the root bridge. The root bridge only has designated ports because they're pointing away from it. That is confusing. They should have named it something else, like something special to signify that, hey, these ports are on the root bridge. But the makers of Spanning Tree did not do that. So root ports are not on the root bridge. They point to the root bridge. They point to the path to make it to the root bridge. Designated ports point away from the root bridge, and that's the only kind of port that the root bridge will have on it. The root bridge will never block a port. The root bridge will only have designated ports. So now we know that all priorities are the same, and it's the MAC address that will cause a device to become the root bridge through its root bridge election. And the election just means that devices will send this bridge ID, basically what my, what's my MAC address and what's my priority. And all devices send those out. And if all priorities are the same, the device with the lowest MAC address wins the root bridge election. 
Now, that's a bad thing, because what if, looking at our topology, switch zero happened to be our core switch. It's the switch that we have connected to, let's just say our building router. And switch three is some old junker that we found in our grandma's closet way back when, but we needed it and we just plugged it in. Instead of having switch zero be the core of your broadcast domain, or it's the closest to the exit, it's maybe it's the newest device, it has the most resources on it, switch three is going to be the one that everything has to channel through. So switch one, instead of going straight to switch zero, you now have to travel all the way around to get to switch zero. So that's bad networking design. That is why we want to set the priority levels. So now we know that switch three is the root bridge because all the priorities are the same and it has the lowest MAC address. Now let's configure a device switch zero so that way it will become the root bridge because let's just say that's the device we want to be the root bridge. So there's two different ways we can do it. There's spanning tree, VLAN 10, and we have a choice of priority or root. Let's just say priority first. Priority of zero through 61,440. Now remember, spanning tree lower is better. Now if we set it to zero, this device will always be the root bridge unless Another device is set to zero and it has a lower MAC address. Because remember, MAC addresses are the tiebreaker. Lower is better. And another thing to keep in mind is you have to do increments of 4096. So let's just do 8192. So now we hard coded our priority to be 8192. Show spanning tree, summary. You see that we are the root bridge for HR because we chose VLAN 10. And you can do ranges of VLANs as well, but we just chose the one. And you can see that we're still blocking VLAN 1 because we are not the root bridge for VLAN 1. We are only the root bridge for VLAN 10. So let's just go ahead and add that in there just to make sure everything is the same. Spanning tree, VLAN 1, priority 8192. Show spanning tree. Summary, you can see we're no longer blocking anything. Everything is now forwarding. We have one listening because we just changed it, so it has to go through the whole election process again. Now, one thing to note is that spanning tree uses BPDUs to communicate. BPDUs are only for spanning tree, that's it. And BPDUs just is a certain type of packet. It's a special packet that's for spanning tree. And we'll cover why that's important in just a minute. So now if we do a show spanning tree, we'll see that the priority is 8193. This is our address. We can see this is our MAC address for this device. This bridge is the root. We see that all switches have gone through the election process again. Now switch three is blocking. So switch three was the root. Show spanning tree. We can see it's no longer the root. The root has been updated. Now let's just say that we hired somebody new. They're entry level. They wanted to make switch three the primary root bridge again because they made a mistake. Config T, spanning tree, VLAN, one and 10, both VLANs this time. This time we're going to do root, root, and then primary. So root primary will set this device as the primary device. Now, if you do a show spanning tree, we'll see that the priority is 4106. 
And you're probably wondering, hold on a second, why is it so low? What it does is it takes the root bridge and decrements it, so that way it will become the root bridge. Show span tree summary. You can see that we are now the root bridge for all those VLANs. Okay, so now we're back to switch three being the root bridge because we set that to be the primary. Switch zero has a priority of 8192. I just wanted to set the topology back the way it was so that way you could see which ports are blocked. So now let's see what happens when we turn off spanning tree. Config T, no spanning tree, VLAN 1 and 10. We just disabled spanning tree on that port. No spanning tree, VLAN 1 and 10. Config T, no span tree, VLANs 1 and 10. Last but not least, no span tree, VLAN 1 and 10 again. So span tree is now disabled. If we go to our simulation mode, try to ping again. So let's go to PC0, and let's try to ping PC3. You can see we have an ICMP packet. You can see the ICMP packet goes out both ways. And here is the duplicate packets now. And you can see it's just going around and around and around, this is just from one ICMP packet. That's it. Now this red one right here is DTP, Dynamic Trunking Protocol. It's just a different type of packet. But we can see that we had so many ICMPs until finally, it just, nothing ever happens. It just basically locked up. So that's why spanning tree is bad. From one ICMP packet, you can see all this happened. So now let's go into port fast and BPDU guard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to re-enable spanning tree. You can see the spanning tree packets are already coming online. So now we have spanning tree enabled. And it's going to go through the whole calculations again to find out which one's going to be the root bridge. So now I want to talk about BPDUs. BPDUs are used for what's called port fast and BPDU guard. Now what port fast is, that's just the process of taking a port and going directly to the porting mode. So we click off here, click back on. We can see that it's going to take some time to establish itself and become forwarding. And the reason for that is spending tree. Spanning tree has to go through a whole process of listening, learning, and then either forwarding or blocking. Because it wants to make sure that there's no loop that's going to get caused by activating this one interface. So what we do, you can see it took so long to become active. So we go here, into FA24, Spanning tree, or fast. You can do question mark. Can disable it or you can say enable it on the trunk. But if you hit enter, you'll get this warning message saying only do this for access ports, never do this on a trunk. 
And it says right here, port fast has been configured, but will only have an effect when the interface is in a non-trunking mode. So an access port. If we do show run, we'll see that port 24 is indeed an access port. Now let's try that again. Take this off, put it back on, immediately into forwarding mode. It didn't have to go through the whole process to verify that there's not going to be a loop caused by this interface going active. So whenever you have any end devices, port fast, it speeds things up tremendously. So now let's talk about BPDU guard. So what BPDU guard is, is it's a mechanism to detect a BPDU packet. And then if it detects a BPDU packet, it will shut down the interface. Now, BPDU packets are only used for spanning tree. So the only devices that should ever send a BPDU packet is a switch. Computers, routers, access points, anything else should never send a BPDU packet. So you want to have it configured on access ports just in case somebody decides to plug in their own little switch. That way it'll detect that BPD packet and shut it down. So let's do that real quick. First, let's see their interfaces. So ports one and three are trunks. Port 24 is an access port. Span tree, BPDU guard, enable. So now BPDU guard is enabled on port 24, which is an access port. And it should never go down because we should never get a BPDU packet from that port. But what happens if we do it on a trunk? Span tree, BPDU guard, enable. So you can see immediately it went down. Now it'll go down if it detects a BPDU packet. You can see it went into an error disable state. So if we do a show interface, we'll see that it's error disabled. So even if we go to config T into phase zero one, no spanning tree, BPDU guard enable, do show run. We see that it's no longer there. Do show interface, we see that's still air disabled. No shutdown, do show interface, it's still air disabled. To get away from air disabled to correct it, you have to shut down and then no shut down the port. You have to cycle it for the air disabled message to go away. And there it is. It is now connected. So that is spinning tree. I hope this video has been informative. Remember that spinning tree, while a pain, is a good thing. You just have to make sure that you correctly configure the switches that you want to be the root bridge to be the root bridge and not leave it up to chance.